YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. All right, it has been a while. I am so pumped to get a review out to you guys today on a Sunday, which is not my normal review day, but I wanted to get a video out to you guys before I start this week of new reviews. I had about a week and a half or so off because of the move, but I am back to stay. I'm in the new apartment and we got a bigger film area, more comfort, allows me to uh, hopefully create better content. So anyways, today, what we're gonna be looking at is the Torin RDA. I have this here in the red copper. This is a Torin RDA by Thunderhead Creations. It's a dual coil honeycomb uh, airflow RDA, 24 millimeters. So let's drop it down low, show you the ins and outs, come back up top, and I will give you my final opinions on it. All right, we are down low with the Thunderhead Creations. This is the Torin RDA. It's gonna come in this little pouch here, and this is gonna signify the color. This is the red copper. This is all they had. Wouldn't have really been my choice just because of the patina on it, but whatever. This is gonna be the Allen key, which is going to be for your deck grub screws. You're gonna get a little peripheral pouch with the Torin user manual. In the back of that pouch, you're gonna get extra RDA, ugh, not extra RDAs, extra O-rings, swamp pin, extra grub screws, and a certified qual a QC card. We'll just leave it at that. Pretty simple. But this is the part that I like a lot. Inside of that pouch, you will receive this little case here. It's gonna say. Thunderhead Creations on the top have their little logo, a scratch and check for authenticity, Thunderhead, uh, Torn RDA, and then the contents. So, oh, and I guess I mixed up the bottom with the RTA bottom, but this is the RDA top, oh well. So, it's the same thing, it's gonna unscrew just like this, and you will have this nice little Addy stand with your RDA threaded down into there. So that's pretty nice, you can work off of it. So threading the RDA off of there. You can see on the bottom here, it's gonna have your number, very high serial number, 11542, Thunderhead Creations, some warnings, and then their symbol protruding 510 pin. This is the solid one. Squonk is in the package. You can see this red copper has patinaed a little bit. And it picks up stuff very easily. Little design across the top here. Ultim drip tip. And then you've got these little teardrop style air flows. Let's thread it down and check them out. So it's going to be wide open. It's going to be a full teardrop like so. And then you can cut it down like this. And it locks out all the way. But if you lock it out all the way, you can see it does open up a little space. And then locks out all the way open on that side. Your Ultim drip tip. If I can get it out. You will have... A black o-ring in here to hold down your 810 drip tips normal 810 goon style drip tip there pulling off the top cap you got a decent conical design inside of the barrel there and then there is one of your locking mechanisms here which will pair up on the deck with these little guys right there and that'll be your locking system so coming to the deck the island key they include is going to go for your grub screws here on the side double thick o-ring here <clears throat> you're gonna see the peak insulator running on this side of the deck meaning that these are your two positive posts these are your negative here 
your coils are just going to lay right over this airflow like so. You can see it's got a honeycomb airflow and they're like kind of like a, that half pipe style. Pretty nice cool looking airflow. If you look into here you can see how it comes in at this angle downward and they go up into that half pipe there. One second here, let me turn on another light. Yeah, so pretty new, pretty unique little airflow design. Juice well, nothing too deep, nothing really too crazy going on. Airflow is the cool part. <clears throat> the positioning of your coils is a bitch because your grub screws are going to twist your leads this way. If they came in from this side of the deck, it would have made life a hell of a, of a lot easier. But, I mean, they didn't. So, what are we going to do? Not too deep. I would recommend um, thinning out where your wicks are going to be because that's a very thin area. And also, they're not going to be too long either. So, let's throw some coils in there and I will show you how I position them. With the coily tool, <clears throat> you're going to want to go with 5.0 millimeter in length. And also, what I recommend is taking your coil before you install it, twisting them at an angle like so. And that is just going to make it drop right in and not it's just going to make your life a hell of a lot easier because of the way that those grub screws are so i would recommend doing that for sure so let me show you some coil positioning in this all right so we got that five millimeter coil length dropped in got them nice and tightened up firing evenly now for those bottom air flows i position my coils well, let's explain the top ones first. For the top ones, I position them so that the top slams. God damn it. So that the top <clears throat> airflow slam right at the top of the coil and then come around it this way. The rest of them are going to be slamming dead center and maybe coming up or going down. It's hard to tell. Um, <clears throat> but the bottom ones. What they're going to do is they're going to be coming right up like this and wrapping around this side of the coil on both sides. So that is pretty much the positioning that you should go with on the coils. At least that's how I like it. Fiddle around with it. See how if you like it better. You can see the height <clears throat> from this side. You can see about 60% of the coil over this wall here. And they're just kind of hanging out over. Kind of reminds me of a uh, coil positioning on the BTFC, kind of similar. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw some wick in this bad boy. So, for the height of the cotton, you're pretty much just going to want it to lay just a little bit past the top of this. And then thin it out, tuck it right down in there. This is a tiny juice well, as I said. So, you just want to be careful that you are not overstuffing it. And then I just kind of come down the center the best I can and just push it back a little bit. Sit it right down in there. All right, so there we have it, all wicked up, vaping. So we are going to bring it on the top side with the Torin RDA if I could get all the pieces together for it so let's go alright we're back up top real quick I want to point something out that photo right there of this nasty nasty human being beast of a man that's vape boy so, if anybody's seen Vape Boy in uh, chats on YouTube, there he is right there, licking a knife. <laughs> Alright, back to the review. 
Up top, the Torin RDA by Thunderhead Creations. Got it here in the red, or sorry, no, this is the red brass, not red copper. I don't know why I said red copper. Red brass. Um, Heaven's Gifts has it for $46.80, but I ended up getting this off of uh, my V Pro for like $35 or something like that. It's a little patinaed because I've been using it. Got the little teardrop airflow. Yeah, so let's talk about it. 24 millimeter. Uh, the airflow is definitely really unique. It's at a 45 degree angle, 28 micro airflow holes for dedicated and full flavor. Now, um, let's talk about it. In my opinion, it comes in copper black, copper brass, brass cracked, stainless steel, black, brass red, and brass black. So, um, yeah, the RDA itself. It's not the newest RDA out, um, but I felt that I wanted to do a video on it because I do have the Torin Beast RTA that I picked up at the same time. So. Uh, I wanted to do a review on this before I did the RTA. Now, Thunderhead Creations. In my opinion, they're definitely a pretty, pretty good company. They come out with quality stuff at a good price. Now, would I pay $50 for this RDA, the price point that it's at at HeavensGifts.com? Probably not. At $50, I would not recommend it. At $35, yeah, I would say that's a good price for it. Um, some cons that I have for it. The airflow design. It is very particular. It is easy to drop your coils into that deck and, and build it and wick it and everything. But the way that um, the airflow is, if you don't get both of your coils perfectly centered at the same distance and just perfect you'll get a little bit of turbulence you'll hear the difference in one of the airflow holes and when you're vaping it one side will make a different noise and that can get annoying so for me having OCD um, I have to get it built just right for the airflow to not have that turbulent sound now being such a small size teardrop hole, I thought this thing was going to be very, very restrictive. Now, I got a .16 on it sitting on top of the Stormbreaker, which is a parallel mechanical mod. It doesn't have enough airflow for me to do a super low build on a mech, but it does have enough airflow to run like a .15 on a mechanical mod for me. I like a more restricted, hot dense flavorful vape now i will say that even though you can hear turbulence if you don't have those coils perfect the airflow does draw very very smooth it is um a different type of styled airflow i like the little ramp how it's designed um it doesn't have the biggest juice well so you do have to redrip it a lot <clears throat> It's not really a leaker by the way that the airflows are designed at that pitch going down in. The juice will get into those holes, but they'll, they'll pull, it'll pull up down at the bottom. It won't end up outside of the airflow. When you suck in, it'll pull it back in. That might give you a little more spit back, but it won't leak. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to a beginner builder because of how you have to get the coils positioned just right for the airflow. But uh, you know, if you've been building for a little bit, it shouldn't be too difficult for you. I would recommend putting the top cap on there, drawing on it before you wick it, and uh, make sure you got your coils in a in a good spot for you and how it, it feels good on the draw before you wick it. Because the first time I built it. I had that turbulence on one side and I had to pull it back apart and fix it because that just annoys the shit out of me. It's not too loud of an airflow. It does, uh, and this is all dependent on, on coil positioning, wide open, it does have a little squeak to it. I'm sure I could tweak it out by moving the coils. Um, this is at about halfway opened. 
quiets right down at halfway. Very, very restrictive though. Now as far as flavor goes, if you do build this right to this airflow, it does have very good flavor. You know, you're, you've got a side, more bottom than side airflow. It's a combo of both, but I would say it's a, eh, it's pretty even side and bottom airflow. Um, so you're getting great flavor off of it. Does it keep up with all the RDAs that are coming out right now today? I would say it flavor wise it does keep up the only thing that this is lacking is versatility and um, you can't open the airflow up a little bit more personally I like how restricted it is because that's how I vape but there's a lot of RDAs out today that you can adjust the positioning of the airflow and shut it down halfway and it's still hitting the center of the coil so the RDA is versatile and it can cater to all vapors with more airflow or restrict it down and still hit the centers of the coils. So if you like a restrictive vape, this might be something you, you might want to look into because the only thing holding it back is that it doesn't have more airflow. But if you like restrictiveness, you'll love it. I mean, it's got smooth airflow, very flavorful. It's not the biggest cloud machine, but it throws big clouds, you know. I got some .15 mitch green aliens in here on a mech obviously it's gonna throw clouds very flavorful smooth vape if this is something you are looking at even though it's a little bit older of a product because to me a lot of the stuff that is coming out right now or in the last few weeks nothing's really sparked my attention so I've kind of gone back and try to pick up stuff that I maybe didn't get like a year ago and this is something that I would say definitely puts out great flavor very smooth airflow the price point is dependent because I found it for 50 and I, but I bought it for 35 so if you can get it for 35 I'd recommend it if it's if you can only find it for 50 eh. You're gonna have to make that decision yourself. Do I think you can get a better RDA for $30, $35 today? Yes. But if you're like me and you have everything out that's new and you're trying to look at some new stuff, this is probably definitely something you might wanna take a peek at if you like a more restrictive vape. So definitely, yeah. I recommend it with uh, stipulations stipulations I just stated so I feel like I'm a little rusty at this because it's been a few weeks since I did a review so I wanted to start out on a product that's not huge right now coming up on cue we got the top side <clears throat> carbon and where is it we also got the mutant RDA and a few other things coming and some new lines from EMB so everybody we'll see you on the Sunday hoedown show tonight I'm sure I missed a couple things in this review because, like I said, I'm rusty right now. Forgive me. <clears throat> so, see you tonight on a Sunday hoedown and throughout this entire week with some new reviews. Everybody, have a great day.